Hey everybody, in our last couple of lessons, I got you started using RStudio Cloud to describe some variables, and we'll get into that more in another lesson, that are made up of categories. So we had talked about using our sample hospital data set, uh, which we have here. Uh, we had talked about uh, variables that um, describe patients that were in certain categories. So for instance, we talked about the gender of patients as male and female, people's marital status, such as being married, widowed, divorced, or single, and um, length of stay uh, as being um, under or over 30 days. So uh, we can, and we use the summary um, function here, which I'll run here. So we had, I just want to make sure I, I'm not confusing anybody. We had um, return 30. I didn't want to say length of stay because that's not what we were looking. But we had a category of did the patient return within 30 days or not as a yes or no category. Um, and whether the person had a spouse, yes or no. And we actually even have age categories, uh, which is not specifically age as a number, but whether somebody uh, fell into a range of 65 to 69, 70 to 74, and so on. We're going to extend that this time. Last time I left you um, hanging a little bit by um, talking about um, the variables, uh, gender and spouse, and we just counted those and uh, we created a vector called G that we use to, as a holding container. And um, we can just I'm just going to put my cursor on line 10, which just says G, so we can display that, um, which, for, for instance, said that in the sample, um, 86 patients had a spouse or partner, and 75 did not. Um, and then we created the bar plot that you see on the right that um, describes that exact thing. Now, there are two things that are missing uh, from here in helping us clarify things. And that has to do with, first of all, when, um, well, first of all, when you exported this graph, you only saw the yes or no's, and there were no labels on any of this. So um, we don't know what this number means on the left. And unless you create a lot of narrative around uh, the the bar graph itself, we're not clear on what that is. So it would be helpful to, for us to be able to annotate this bar graph. And so I'm going to show you how to do it um, with the code that we already have in our script. So I'm going to just um, put my cursor in the parentheses because you'll never really want a bar graph that's not annotated. So we're going to annotate this so you have it uh, for all time. And there are options that you can put in um, the functions themselves inside the parentheses that give you um, additional flexibility. So we're going to put a comma here because we're going to have an option. And you'll notice again that your script has turned red because now we have a change to it. So when we save it, it won't be red anymore. And you don't have to worry about spaces. I just by convention put a space because I think it's a little bit easier to read. And um, if you think back to um, math class back in eighth grade or so, you worked on graphs and um, this line here was called the x-axis. And we have labels on this x-axis saying yes and no. So we don't need to do too much um, to this right now in this bar graph because we already have labels here. But our y-axis does not have a label. And um, this is, what we displayed here, the number of people in each category. So this is uh, either a frequency or a count. So we're going to say that we want a label on the y-axis and the terminology here is y-lab equals, because we're gonna put a y-label. And you can really put anything in there, uh, but it's gotta go in quotation marks because it's just words, can be anything. So I'm gonna put the word frequency you could put whatever you want that makes sense, but it's got to make sense. And then we want this main label across the top. Um, so we're going to put a comma 
again, and we're going to call this main. This is a main label. And you see that we get um, a, a blowout that says overall and subtitle for the plot. So if I just actually click on this, it'll correct, you know, complete that for me. And again, I'm going to need this in quotation marks and we're going to put in a main label. And again, it can be anything you want as long as it makes sense. Um, so we'll say, does patient have a spouse slash partner? Now we'll see if this looks too long when we do this. Um, but what we're going to do is now we're going to run this. And it looks like these labels were just put on top. It actually isn't. It actually create, oops, it did, Never mind. Um, yeah, so we have this here and now we have this graph that makes a lot more sense. So if you export it um, and put it in a PowerPoint or a Word document or a Google doc, it's gonna make a lot more sense. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you today. The other thing has to do with, um, we sometimes don't always want to know what counts there are. We want to know a percentage of the sample that is has a spouse or partner or any other categorical variable. Uh, so I want to extend what we have done in the past to um, allow you to show that option. So um, I'm going to just continue this here after 10. Um, you could start all over, but you, the first thing you need to do when you do these percentages is to do this sorting of the categorical variable into uh, the various categories that it has. So it kind of makes sense to just continue this. And um, to make things easier, uh, I'm going to give this an other, uh, I'm going to give this another vector name so we can store it both as the count and as the percent. So I'm going to call it percent G. And again, you can call this anything you want. And we're going to assign it the value, again, using the less than sign and the dash as an arrow. And we're going to use a, um, a function called prop.table. Now, prop is a proportion. It's not a percentage. Um, and if again, if you think back to earlier math classes, um, a percentage is a proportion times 100. Um, so we're going to um, put this in here. We're, now we've got to figure out the, pro we want the proportion to, to compute this as a percentage. Um, so we're going to take that proportion and outside the parentheses, we're going to multiply this by 100. And then if we go to the next line and just display Oops, what's in that vector, hopefully we'll have done this correctly. Um, so let's just run, I'm gonna highlight both these lines of code and hit run, and uh, we will see that it creates the vector here, um, which it displays what it is. Now, sometimes you don't always get what's displayed. And now we see that uh, 53, and there's a long line after the decimal, 53% um, of the sample had a spouse or partner and 46% did not. Uh, now I'm going to tell you here that I'd like you, as is the convention in most research, to round to the hundredths place, which is going out to decimal points. Um, so now we have um, two vectors, G and percent G, and we could create a bar plot with that too. Um, so we could actually just put this in, we could just change this to percent G here, but I'm going to create a whole other line for you. And I suggest you do the same because sometimes you're going to want, um, to display the count and sometimes you're going to want to display the percentage that will be up to you generally. Uh, we'll talk about that later, why you might want to use one versus the other. Um, but you could you could just use either one. You could adapt this line 13 to say the same thing. But our Y label is no longer going to be the same once we switch to percentages. So what we'll want to do is change this word frequency to percent, or I'm going to show you that we could just put the percent sign. Again, you could have anything between those quotation marks 
but um, you know the quotation marks have to be there. So I'm going to show you this, and we're going to run it. Whoops. And there we go. Does the patient have a spouse or partner? And now again, you see it corrected. And again, I just wanted to show you that you can scroll through uh, previous plots. So, you know, unless you clear your memory by sweeping out the plots pane, um, you will have a record of all your plots throughout the class. Um, so once you have that all set up, I'm going to save this script. Don't forget to do that before you leave. Um, we now looked at the percentage of patients who had a spouse or partner. Last time we started off with the variable gender, and I'm going to just show you again uh, how you can take a script like the one we're developing for class and then just, you know, not recreate code every time, but just put the variables in that you want. Um, so here, and now I, if now understand that G is only talking about spouses now. So I'm going to have to start at the beginning here and change this to gender. Um, but once I do that, now you could assign it another value. If you want to keep spouse, you could just, you know, call this A or B or something else. But I'm just going to run this one line. Notice that the number, uh, the numbers in G here have changed. In fact, when I run the next line and display it, um, before we had 86 and 75, now we have 64 and 97, um, just to, because now we're displaying information about gender. But notice, because the information about patient gender is in a vector called G, we don't need to change any other code in uh, line 11 in order to get percentages. It's already there. So I'm going to run this and run this. And now we see that um, just over almost 40% of our sample is female and 60% uh, is male. Um, when we go to plot it, now our frequency is going to change, is going to stay the same because we're just plotting G, which is the counts. But we're going to have to think about the main label and it'll have to change whenever you change your uh, variable. So we're going to do patient, oops, got to spell that correctly, sex. And that would be the same thing if we're going to do it for the percentages. And um, I'm going to run the first row so you see it annotated. And now you see the frequency. And if you look, actually, the difference between males and females for sex is a lot different than having a spouse or partner. Um, and if we want to look at the percentage of males and females, as opposed to just the counts that we have, so we want to display the 40% and the 60%, I'm just going to run that line. And I just want to show you something. Now, you, now really what's changing is the y-axis, the labels and uh, the values. If you scroll through this, you'll notice that the height of the bars does not change. Right, because um, it's still, you know, as like a third more um, uh, fem uh, males than females. So we have, or half again as much uh, males as females. So the height of the bars isn't going to change. What does change is the y-axis label, and I think this is what you need to know uh, to do your homework. So again, just a quick recap. We have worked on labeling the bar plots, um, the y-axis and main labels. And then we, I showed you how to take the sorted counts of a variable that's a category and put those into percentages and then how to display the same. Um, and I hope you found this helpful and um, I hope you find this useful in completing your homework.